What's going on growers? James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It's late July here and the peppers are thriving. So today I want to share with you five brilliant tips for growing and harvesting peppers. Let's go! It's been super hot here in New Jersey with the temperatures over 90 for the past couple days and some of them in the heat index like close to 100 degrees, which is hot for where I live usually. And with the humidity high, that can be rough too. So that leads me to my first tip when it comes to growing peppers and that is when you're planting your peppers, you like to plant them so they get some partial shade in the hottest part of the day which might be a little unique. You think peppers, those things should be in the full sun. But even though peppers are tropical plants, when it comes to temperatures over about 90 degrees, then they'll actually start possibly dropping down some of the blossoms from their flowers. So if, these, if the heat just gets too hot, you're in 90, 95, 97 degrees, this causes some of the flowers to drop off. But if you'll notice here, I'm in a location where I planted them where I'm getting some shade from my hazelnuts, but we're also getting some shade from the other taller plants around it. So again, that first tip is to give your tomato uh, pepper plants a little bit of partial shade on the hottest part of the day if you're in a really hot location. If you're in a cooler location where you don't get temperatures over the 90s then you're not going to have to worry about this as much. Sweet peppers taste best when they go from green to red or green to yellow whatever color they're going to end up being based on their variety and the hot peppers they're the hottest when they're fully mature and ripe too. But if you allow one of your peppers to get fully mature on the plant then that plant is just going to focus on uh, maturing those seeds and finishing those seeds so it can make the next round of things. So that leads us to our second tip, which is when it comes to peppers, early in the season you want to go out and harvest some of your peppers to increase the overall production of the plant. So you can see we've got a pepper right here. This is going to be a California Wonder Pepper, I believe, a nice red one. And this is just green right here. I'm going to harvest it at this stage. And you'll notice I'm cutting it. I'm not, I'm not breaking it off the plant. I'm just going to harvest it at this stage by cutting it off. And I'm gonna eat this pepper at this stage. Again, this isn't fully ripe and fully mature, but since I did this, we've got three or four peppers on that plant. Now that plant is gonna focus on making those peppers larger. As those get a little larger, then I can cut some of the other ones off and it's gonna trick it into continue flowering. So as we move up the plants a little bit, you'll notice here, we've got some young peppers that are here and we wanna make sure we continue these flowers. So this is gonna increase the overall production. If we do this, That'll help with the production at the end of the season, making sure we're getting the most out of the plants. You don't wanna do this too late into the season so you don't allow the plants to mature. But the other thing too is, when you're at the end of the whole entire year and you're going into the frost, you wanna make sure you harvest all the peppers because once the frost comes, those are gonna go bad the next day. It looks like Tuck found that pepper that we just harvested. He's snacking on it. It's probably a good one. He likes them when they're green too but he just loves seeing me, anything that I grab, he, I think he just wants to go over and eat it. It's like a monkey see, monkey do thing. But I just grabbed it, I dropped it for a second, I turned around and he, he's off with it. I wish I caught it on camera, but you can see, he's enjoying it now. If you guys love seeing talking in the videos, hit that like button because he loves being a part here and he's definitely part of the garden. So that brings me over to the third tip when it comes to growing your peppers. And this third tip is, let me bring it down here. It has to do with mulch. So this mulch is gonna be so important for your peppers because peppers, they really really need a good, even moisture content. You do not want your peppers to dry out completely and then rewatering, rewater them. So as I move the soil, you'll notice, look at, look at the water content down here. Very nice. And we've got even roots and stuff growing here. So the kind of mulch will make a difference too. Peppers actually like a nice light mulch that's relatively thick. So these leaves diced up are really good. Another good mulch would be just a straw mulch or even some grass clippings will work perfect for your peppers because this is gonna help really uh, maintain the moisture content in the soil, help keep the soil cool, and then help fertilize the plants too. So mulch is one of those things that is so important for every single plant, but it's vitally important for these peppers because we do not want the soil completely drying out. That adds so much stress. Another reason that I love mulch besides the fact that it helps retain moisture and keep the soil cool is that it's slowly being broken down. Since this is an organic matter mulch, the microbiological life and the worms are slowly breaking this down and it's turning into a form of fertilizer to feed some of these plants, which leads me actually to my fourth tip, which is kind of contrary to what I just said. And when it comes to peppers, you don't actually want to over fertilize your peppers because if you're over fertilizing them, giving them too much nitrogen or something, you're just gonna focus this pepper on the production of a lot of leaves. So your NPK, your nitrogen, that's gonna be your main focus to have a lot of growth and the green leaf production. But your things like the phosphorus, that's gonna to lead to more of your fruit production. So you wanna make sure that you're not over fertilizing these plants. When it comes to peppers, they're very similar to your basil, like I have planted right here. So it's nice to plant them next to each other because your basil is that same common feeder as the pepper. So pepper is a light feeder. It just needs a good, evenly moist soil. 
not like your cabbages, which are super heavy feeders, which actually leads me now to my fifth tip, which is companion planting when it comes to peppers. We'll go back to that basil right here. Basil is an excellent companion to plant with your peppers because they're similar and they help uh, benefit one another, but also you can eat them together. So you'll notice in this one small little bed right here, if we want to grow peppers, we're not just growing peppers in this section. What we're doing is we're growing peppers as the main foundation. Then underneath and going through, we've got some watermelons, utilizing them as a form of ground cover. Then we have some small basils and stuff, as almost like an herbaceous mixed in. Next to those, we've got tomatoes growing up, trellises using that vertical space. And then on lower down here, we've got our herbaceous crop of some of our things like the lettuces. So we're making sure we're companion planting things, utilizing the space and growing things around peppers that just contribute to it as well. We've also got a next round of cucumbers planted down here. So I wanna grab a couple of these peppers. These are hot peppers. I don't grow a lot of hot peppers, but I did grow some this year. So I'm gonna harvest a couple of those and then we'll harvest anything else that's large in here, making sure we're extending that harvest and again, getting the most out of it. Just gonna grab a couple of these peppers. And again, you'll notice I mentioned it before, but we're cutting these peppers out. We're not breaking them off the plants. We don't wanna negatively affect the plant by just being too rough with it. We spent all this time being gentle and growing it well, we wanna make sure that continues. So variety selection is gonna be a big deal when it comes to peppers. And these are hot peppers here, and I've got some sweet peppers next to it. So if you wanna uh, save your own seed, cross-pollination is one of those things you really need to think about. So you wanna make sure you're not planting hot peppers and sweet peppers right next to each other if you wanna make sure you're getting those harvests. Look at this pepper right here, this one's got this, these ribs on it, this one's the Criolla de Cocina, I believe. So this one's gonna be turning red too. But I'll just take one of these large green ones just so it keeps flowering. But as we move up here, you'll notice we've still got some nice flowers and stuff on it. The plants are doing well. And right underneath that, we've got beans. Again, always making sure we get the most out of the harvest that we do have. So I've got some peppers in pots. I wanna bring those over to you and just mention one or two other things when it comes to growing peppers in pots and whether or not they're annuals or perennials. If you live in a location like me, then you grow peppers as annuals. But if you live in a location like California or something where it's much warmer, you could grow peppers as perennials because they, they really are true perennials. The best way to do that, in my opinion, is to grow them in pots. This way you can move them in and out. But personally, I don't do that because of my location. I just wanted to grab a couple of these though. These are the, I think they're the bull nose or sheep nose. I can't remember the exact name, but I'll put it down there for you. These peppers, this is albino. That's what they are, Alb albino bull nose peppers, I think. So they've got a pretty decent flavor. You can see they, uh, they're my first peppers to really truly finish besides the Ajvarskis, the purple ones. So I'm gonna take a bite of this, see how it tastes. But I just wanted to encourage everyone that anyone could be growing stuff in their own patio. It's super easy to do. And if you wanna try to use them as perennials, the peppers, you can bring them in and out. I think this is the best, best way to do it. Just don't use a pot that's so huge that you have to try to carry it in and out. That'll definitely hurt you. Let me taste this pepper though and see how it is. sweet it's good not as good as uh maybe the marconi or something but it's, it's good when it comes to peppers i see a lot of people ask if they should be pruning their peppers well in my opinion i don't think it's necessary to prune your peppers and i'll explain why so when it comes to pruning your peppers or topping your peppers the idea is that when they're young you pull off some of these tops and what that'll do is increase more tops to grow. So instead of just having, like you'll notice one top here, you'll have multiple tops, maybe 10, 20 tops. So more tops, the idea is more flowers, which leads to more fruit, which I understand that that makes sense, like logically, but in my opinion, it, it, I've tried it, and the way that I get more fruit is by doing those two things that I showed you. And they are by harvesting your peppers before they're completely ripe to make sure that they continue to flower and that the plant doesn't just focus on the production of seed, but on the production of flowers and fruit, and also to just extend your season as far as you possibly can. Those two things I think are gonna make the big difference and be the main factors when it comes to overall harvest. Because if you want to top a plant like this, for instance, you're gonna need more space, it's gonna bush out a really lot. So what I like to do is I just plant my, my peppers every square foot. In the books, they might tell you to plant every 18 inches to 24 inches, but instead of planting one plant in one 24 inch area, I, have to I like to plant two. Each plant is gonna have a lower yield, but overall that two foot area is gonna have a higher system yield. So I think that's what is important to focus on. When it comes to tomatoes and stuff, I prune those a certain way and I really think that helps, but your peppers, I just like how they grow naturally. And unless it's a very tall and lanky pepper, I think this is the way to do it. You'll notice right here, this isn't, this isn't pruned at all. 
and it's still got some nice bushiness and some good fruit on it. But this is a section that is like, you know, competing with some other plants too. This is everything in one square foot area, trying to push for the highest yield in the smallest amount of space. And again, we love that basil uh, pepper combination. And we've got some peppers here and eggplants here, which you shouldn't plant too close together, but we've got that division of the basil. So we've got that kind of to separate things and get that whole companionship as opposed to, you know, two plants that are next to each other that are fighting. We like to put plants together that are friends. That's this whole idea of companion planting. How, like, how you think about it, it could work. There's some people you like being around, you just connect with them. You know, everything works together better and you guys are like more friendly. Same thing with plants. There's some plants that they love being around and then there's some people you don't love being around. Same thing with plants. So those same things we kind of try to apply and create a system that works together to overall create a higher yield with less work. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you feel encouraged to get out there to use some of these tips. And I hope that these tips provide you with some value, which increases your harvest into the future. And I just wanted to say for a lot of you out there to stay motivated, stay encouraged and stay at it because we're about the middle of the season when it's getting super hot and some of the stuff is slowing down. Maybe you're getting some pest problems. Things can get a little bit discouraging, but stick with it. Keep your eye set on the harvest. It's much easier Easier to pay that price when you know the promise that's a big deal at least for me and also make sure you're taking advantage of the time you have now to invest to get your fall garden ready so when other people are ripping their gardens out in October and they've got nothing you're out there harvesting and just taking advantage of all the time that you have and enjoying it soaking everything in because when I'm out here one thing I don't do enough and Tuck helps me with is to just enjoy myself to feel thankful for what I have and appreciate what I do have not everything works perfect every time but when things do work and you get that beautiful tomato make sure you just relish in that and just you know be thankful for everything that's something I'm trying to work on if you guys enjoyed the video though hit the like button hit the subscribe button share with your friends don't forget to check out the merch down low and remember whenever you're on Amazon use our Amazon affiliate link to start your shopping it doesn't cost you anything helps me and Tuck out just a little bit it. He's around here somewhere, probably digging a hole or eating some. We'll catch you back real soon. James and Tuck, we out.